Hello, my fellow Killjoys and natural-born cynics. Welcome to Hot Take, the only show where having the wrong opinion is the point. Here in this series, I'll be breaking into my closet of more unpopular opinions and weirder think pieces, giving you a lot a bit of dynamism in the discussion surrounding shows where consensus reigns supreme. So for today, let's sink our teeth into something beloved, Eureka 7. Just to get this out of the way, Eureka 7 is a fantastic show and a 10 out of 10 in my book. The questions it asks of morality, the nature of growing up and what that idea even means or looks like, and the nature of what it is to be mature are second to none. Additionally, Eureka 7 doesn't simply ask these questions, but also gives its own definitive answers. And ostensibly, each of these conflicts are presented to and resolved by the show's principal protagonist, Renton Thurston. The show takes wholehearted advantage of its 50-episode run to completely and naturally evolve Renton from the whiny, bratty, snot-nosed kid to whom we are first introduced into a self-actualized, respectful, and respectable man in every sense of the word. His journey confronts him with the issues of honesty to himself and others, the delicacy of human relationships, and the ever-evolving difficulty of resolving personal pride with necessary humility. But, despite all of this, themes like this are a dime a dozen, especially in shonen action, even if they aren't all executed at such a high level. Eureka 7 sets itself apart for not, despite all the time we spend with Renton and watching his growth, being about him at all. Renton's journey is merely the thematically tangible upon which Eureka 7's plot and actual meaning grounds and revolves itself around. I've got the hot take that Eureka 7 is instead the story of Holland, Gecko State's leader a military man turned environmental terrorist on the strength of his belief in a truth buried under government conspiracy and his brother's ambition. There are several elements outside the thematic which signal Holland as Eureka 7's actual principal character. First and most obvious is Eureka herself, the quiet alien intermediary whom Renton falls in love with. Holland is the first person with whom Eureka forms genuine human connections and is also the man who Master Torb entrusts her fate to. His connection to the plot movements of Eureka 7 go back significantly farther than Renton's own, as he is the sole focus of the many flashbacks in the show, outside of those of a personal nature to Renton. Indeed, Holland's past connections to Renton's father Adrock and sister Diane are the key reasons Renton himself becomes involved in the plot at all. Add to this that Renton admires and sees Holland as his personal hero, eventually replacing Holland as Eureka's companion, and Holland's importance, at least to Eureka 7's plot, far outstrips Renton's own. On top of this, with Dewey being Holland's older brother, his function as the show's villain is magnified if he is pitted directly against Holland over Renton. Where his connection to Renton is purely narrative and circumstantial, his opposition to Holland adds an emotional element which evolves their struggle into something more engaging and fulfilling. Delving more into Dewey and his relationship to the two primary protagonists, to see Renton as the focus of Eureka 7 relegates his and Dewey's clash of wills to one of fate. Analyzing the show's conflicts under this lens results in a depreciation of their empathic value. Renton's almost supernatural and implied genetic connection to Eureka forces his opposition to Dewey into the unavoidable category, without any personal justification. Their fight lacks an ideological standoff, and is merely two men meeting in battle because fate, and the writers, dictate it so. Holland, however, has no predetermined link with Eureka. His actions and willingness to throw himself against the power of his own brother is built purely of his own decisions and conviction. There is no plot contrivance which forces Holland to bear the burden of his fight. He voluntarily accepts and bears the burden of his own free will. By this token, Holland becomes a more well-defined and multidimensional person than Renton could ever hope to be, no matter how many challenges he overcomes. Outside of these tangible details which position Holland as the actual focus of Eureka 7, the thematic melody of the show rings far more applicable to him than Renton. Renton starts the show nothing more than an immature child, with no understanding of how the world works or what it is to be a man. That he is forced to confront and choose what path he will take is therefore a given. His existence as a kid necessitates that he go through these struggles. He is expected to grow and mature, not because his circumstances are exceptional, but because his journey is one which literally everyone must take at some point in life. That he will grow and mature is subtextually understood, and there is no impetus for us to believe he will go down the wrong path due to his blatant naivete. By contrast, Holland Novak is already an adult with worldly experience and the weight which accompanies it. He is expected to be a man who has already made his journey, learned from it, and made peace with what it has taught him. He is presented to us, through Renton, as a rock of moral, emotional, and mental stability. These traits of unwavering drive, passion, and determination are what make Renton look up to him after all. But very quickly, we are shown the opposite to be true. Holland begins our experiences with him as a man rife with a short temper and despite his apparent cool-headed judgment, putting a heavy reliance on the support of those around him. On top of this, he is regularly shown as someone whose moral compass is a solid gray. We are introduced to Holland as a man disenfranchised with the world, who turns a blind eye to the individual struggles of those around him. His strength is a fraud, a manufactured front to convince both himself and his crew that he is in command of his life. 
Both he and Renton must undergo an evolution to turn them into the admirable people they become by the show's end, so why is Holland the focus and not Renton? As discussed before, Renton's impending discovery of himself is a given due to his lack of worldliness. It's expected, and from that lacks anything compelling to anyone beyond his place in life. Because Holland is someone who ought to have already endured these challenges, his reconciliation becomes far more layered and the actual thematic driver of the show. Where Renton's naive nature drives him to quickly make moral judgment calls, Holland must not only do the same, but do so by backtracking from those decisions he ran from. Renton need not face himself in his decisions, because his choices are the very things which allow him to grow into a self-actualized individual. As an already grown man, Holland, facing the same decisions, is forced to reconcile his preconceived notions of himself against that which he fears. In essence, though mature on the surface, Holland fears growing up. Through much of the show, he dodges personal responsibility, releases his frustration with himself on others, and recklessly tries to prove his own sense of moral superiority to himself. In order to grow into an actual man, Holland must learn to leave behind his pride, something Renton, as a child, really has no concept of. Because of this, Holland's journey is far more compelling and empathic than that of Renton, whose growth is more accurately described as acquisition of experience, which will eventually allow him to fully mature. Holland's confrontation of that which he should have dealt with and grown from in the past is present in three key elements in the show. Each one represents a facet of maturity, none of which Renton must confront because he lacks the groundwork from which Holland's issues spring. These three distinct facets are as such, love, humility, and confidence. Of these, the first two are rather blatant in their absence, as opposed to confidence, which is harder to detect by virtue of Holland's personality as a man well-suited to leadership. Each of these are components of maturity Holland has run from and makes peace with over the course of the show. Additionally, each one feeds into the others, making Holland's growth something of a rapid avalanche. This makes it significantly more difficult to see his evolution, and is a major factor in why Renton is oftentimes presupposed to be the main thematic character in Eureka 7. In Love, Holland faces a twisted and convoluted situation, not entirely of his own making, but certainly exacerbated by his immature handling of it. Holland's first true love was Diane, Renton's older sister, and he is racked by baseless guilt when she mysteriously disappears while working on the Type Zero project and with Eureka. His inability to reconcile this guilt is manifested in his carrying around a picture of the Thurston family with Diane's face scrawled out, and his less than admirable treatment of Talo. In carrying the photo with him, Holland prevents himself from moving on from the issue and making peace with the fact she's gone. Similarly, his willful ignorance of Talo's feelings for him, despite his engaging with her pseudo-romantically, are his efforts to foist the burden of the guilt onto her rather than facing it himself. Fear of loss combined with guilt to engender his indifferent attitude toward Talo. Overcoming this requires Holland to admit to himself that not only does Talo love him deeply, but that the reciprocation of those feelings are worth the risk of enduring losing her. He must turn aside from his selfishness, the lack of which is a definitive mark of a mature man. More consistently and obviously than any other facet of his fractured personality, Holland continually does battle against his own pride. This is primarily couched in his initial distaste for Renton replacing him as Eureka's chosen companion. Until he accepts this fact, Holland attempts to stay young by acting out and convincing himself that he is the man with a plan, so to speak. He is unable to let go of his pride in being the prime actor on the stage of life. He perpetuates a delusional, immature idea that he is dogmatically immortal. By willingly accepting Renton as Eureka's companion, Holland matures through humility. He ceases to continue grasping at youth, coming to the understanding that being a mentor and supporter of the up-and-comers is just as admirable and necessary as being a central player. And finally, these elements of growth into a properly mature individual culminate with his confrontation with Dewey in episode 35. Up to this point, Holland's lack of confidence in his own decisions is plainly obvious in his insistent comparison of himself to his brother. This is most notably demonstrated by him reading the same book as Dewey, The Golden Bough. Holland fails to believe in his own actions out of a sense of not bearing responsibility. Where Dewey, in his mind, appears a more confident individual by virtue of acting alone and purely on the power of his own convictions, Holland feels much of the responsibility he has taken on has been at the insistence of others. He doubts his own belief in his actions. By confronting Dewey in Gecko State's raid on the Capitol and proudly declaring that Gecko State, not he himself, will win out against his brother, he has left behind the immature notion that command and responsibility are solitary burdens. Furthermore, he comes to grips with the fact that confidence is born not from inexorable determination, but in the knowledge that those around him willingly place full faith and trust in him. Renton is incapable of having these conflicts because his journey is more about learning that they exist in the first place. He lacks the necessary life experience which would otherwise drive him into more dynamic problems such as those that Holland deals with. Love is a foreign concept to him until he meets Eureka, and it's debatable that he fully understands it by the show's end. His being dropped into the middle of an ongoing battle of ideals ensures he never has the opportunity to develop a sense of prideful ambition, and his self-confidence is never challenged in a way that forces him to consider that he never had it in the first place. At best, he must only needs come to terms with the fact that his enthusiasm was inappropriately directed. 
Holland's struggles are more dynamic and nuanced than Renton's, and Eureka 7 being a show about dynamism and evolving understanding of the self, exemplified in Diane through her willingness to give up her physical body to communicate with the Scubs, Holland, not Renton, is the one who most clearly carries those traits through his many arcs as a character. Catch you on the flip side.